Welcome to day two, and now we are going to have a look at localization. So yesterday we saw many things in perception. We saw um, sensor fusion, we saw radar, lidar, and camera perception. And we saw that deep learning is mostly everywhere. So everywhere it's um, dark yellow, you'll see that deep learning can be used. And I gave some model names. Today we are focusing on localization. And to be honest, localization in, is much harder. Um, it's, a, it's a different topic which is less explored and where researchers are generally not really helping in giving overviews and um, vulgarization. So that's, that's one thing. And the second thing is that I have identified three particular localization problems. The first one is when we know the map. So we have a map and we also have our initial position. So um, let's say you put a robot in your house, so you have the map of your house and you also have the initial position of the robot. And then there is this second thing where you know the map, but you don't know the initial position. So it can be anywhere in the map. And finally, you don't know either the map nor the initial position. And so uh, that's again another approach. So let's focus on the first one. And um, when we know the map and we know our position, the thing we do generally is that we use landmark detection. So a landmark can be a street light. It can be um, a, a street sign. It can be um, some lane lines. It can be a lot of stuff. It can be a building. Uh, it's something that you have in your map because you know the map. It's something that you have in your map. And basically the output of perception is going to go into that landmark thing. So um, you can output some street lights, stuff like this. And then you use odometry. So odometry is this idea of um, using how much the wheel turned to know exactly where it has been. So imagine you have a map of your house and you're in the dark and you know your position. You know that if you do maybe three steps, you're out of your room. So that's odometry. That's the idea of knowing how much you have walked or how much you have um, drive. So then you have GPS and GPS RTK. So RTK stands for real-time kinematics. And, um, and that's using GPS to, to improve uh, your position in the, in the map. And so you have like this uh, one meter accuracy with GPS and with RTK, you have uh, maybe 10 centimeters. So that's, that's much better. And then you have ultra wide bone, which is tree lateration. All of that generally goes into an extended Kalman filter. So I didn't give courses again. You know that you can learn Kalman filters with my course and you can learn uh, the extended version with Coursera, Udacity, and maybe some, later one of my courses. But the idea is that you can have this um, Bayesian filtering thing to estimate your position based on that. And then there is the second thing. So what happens when you don't know where you are? And so again, there is this landmark detection thing from perception. And um, so you, you, you find the, the, the walls, you find some buildings, maybe some street lights, and you're trying to map all of that with your relative position. And, um, and then you're trying to locate yourself in the map. So you're saying, hey, I know that there is only one street light in that, street, in that map. And so um, if I'm like 20 meters away, it means that I'm at this exact position. And you're doing this with also a data association thing. So basically, um, this happens when you are trying to uh, match different LIDARs, different cameras, all of that. And uh, you're putting that into something called the particle filter. So the particle filter is exactly like the Kalman filter, but you can have multiple um, assumptions of where you are. So basically you're saying, hey, I can be uh, on the top right or I can also be at the bottom left. It depends on uh, the next measurement. So here again, you can use deep learning for data association, landmark detection, and, um, and, and that's about it. And so you can learn that in the self-driving car nano degree. It's a really simplified project, but still it's a, it's a good approach. And then what happens when you don't know anything? So you don't know the map, you don't know your position. Uh, you're like someone left in a dark room and uh, all you can do is sense if there are some walls. And so that's the idea where you have, uh, first you have visual odometry. So uh, it's this idea where you have 
uh, a set of images and then you detect some features. Um, you, you know that you have some motion and so you're trying to um, estimate a map and estimate your position in the map and saying, hey, if I moved uh, 10 meters and I still have walls, then it means that I'm in the middle of a corridor, something like this. So uh, generally for feature detection, we have um, similar things that you had in uh, LiDAR camera fusion where you have feature tracking, matching, using uh, SIFT, SURF, all these descriptors. So that's one part, visual geometry. And the second part is SLAM. So it was really hard to give an overview of SLAM, but you have um, the first idea is filter-based SLAM. So that happens when you have your sensor, you have landmark feature extraction. Um, that can be done with, again, uh, descriptions using OpenCV techniques, stuff like this. And then you have data association, and then you put that into some sort of Kalman filter. So EKF SLAM or fast SLAM are two approaches very popular in that field that can be used. And again, here, we don't have deep learning. So, uh, so far, we have a bit of deep learning in data association and landmark detection. All the research is about uh, using deep learning on that, but mainly most of the localization things don't include the learning approach. And then you have visual SLAM. And so if there is only one thing where we are talking about deep learning, it's visual SLAM. The idea is the following. Um, you have camera modeling and calibration. It can be a monocular, it can be a stereo setup, but you have this idea of uh, using geometry. And then you have feature extraction and matching. So again, you can use that or deep learning. And, um, and you have also like monocular or stereo setups. And that's, that's really hard because if you have a stereo camera, then you can do 3D reconstruction and that's very useful in visual slam. And, um, and then you have data association. So that's basically the idea of saying, if I see a wall from one angle and I see it from another Perspective, perspective, then maybe it's the same point. And then you have tracking, refinement using RENSAC and a loop closer thing. That's, uh, that's a cool image I found that says um, that, that that's the way that we can build a map. And so if you ever want to work on localization using deep learning, you will need to take a look at Visual Slam. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give a much better explanation than this one today. But um, the idea is really that we can use um, features that we detect, match them, and then do some sort of refinement to estimate a map and our position inside it. Then you have RGBD SLAM. So that's the same idea, but using RGBD cameras. And, um, and then you have mapping using some algorithms like PoseNet or ReLockNet. So in mapping, you can also have deep learning, but most of the time it's not deep learning. Finally, I found this great um, taxonomy in this link where you can find um, all the terms of deep learning for localization and mapping. So you have odometry on the top left where you have visual odometry, inertial LiDAR odometry. Then you have global localization. So global localization is really this idea where um, you have this particle filter thing. You know the map, but you don't know where you are. And then you have, um, so after global localization, you also have mapping and SLAM. So SLAM, of course, is simultaneous localization and mapping. All right, so I uh, hope that helps. That's one way to see the localization field. Again, it's very robotics. Uh, there is not much deep learning today, but there will be in the future. And um, obviously, most of the research inside has been done these past years and is about using um, visual features and uh, Kalman filters, Bayesian filterings, all of that. So I'll see you tomorrow for planning where we can talk about um, planning a trajectory using artificial intelligence, using reinforcement learning, using deep learning as well. So we'll have a look at that tomorrow. See you there.